to Christ the King Episcopal Church in Santa Barbara, California. This is our worship service for the sixth Sunday of Easter, May 17th, 2020. And we welcome everybody in our congregation and around the world to join us. You can see our entire liturgy by visiting our website on the ctksb.org slash liturgies. On that website, you'll find Today's liturgy, and you'll be able to follow along in all the verses, hymns, and the prayers. Our celebrant today is Father Israel Anchen, our rector, and our opening hymn is What Wondrous Love Is This? <laughs> Is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. 
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worldly magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest, peace to his people on earth. Almighty God, the Father, the heavenly King. Glory to God in the highest, peace to his people on earth. Almighty God, the Father, the Heavenly King. We worship you, we give thanks to you, we praise you for your glory. We worship you, we give thanks to you, we praise you for your glory. Jesus, our Lord. Lord and Savior, ruling in glory above, author of life and creator of infinite love. We call on you now for mercy, we pray for your healing within. O Lamb of God, so worthy, forgive us our sin. We worship you, we give thanks to you, we praise you for your glory. We worship you, we give thanks to you, we praise you for your glory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and, and the Holy Spirit, Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of Apostles. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things from one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him. Though indeed he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold, or silver, or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has 
he has appointed. And of this, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 66 responsively by half verse. Bless, O oh, our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who holds our souls in life? And will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O oh God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. Yet, sorry, you let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water. But you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows. Which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God. And I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth. And his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would have not heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer. Nor withheld his love from me. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh but made alive in the spirit, which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. With each other we will walk hand in hand 
We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. work with each other, we will work side by side. We will work with each other, we will work side by side. And we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians. All praise to the Father from whom all things come, and all praise to Christ Jesus, His only His Son, and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one. They'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the earth will no longer see me but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you have promised to me to those who seek your face, come now as we worship you with a prayer and praise. Be present as we read, hear your scriptures, and attend to us as we celebrate your love. We ask all these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. We are now nearing the end of the Easter season. This week on Thursday will be the Ascension Day of Jesus Christ. So we will also celebrate the Ascension of Jesus Christ coming Sunday. So when we celebrate the Ascension, we commemorate Jesus leaving his disciples on this earth as he ascended to his Father. Today's Gospel reading is a continuation of last Sunday's Gospel. In this passage, particularly today's Gospel, the resurrected Jesus is encouraging his disciples to embrace his great love for each other which he left behind. Sometimes you know, those who are in the deathbed, sometimes you know, they do the same thing. They call their children and dear and near ones and say a few last words. So this is the scene what Jesus called all his disciples and encouraged to keep their love each other. So now today's gospel presses on love. 
So today's central theme of the sermon is the greatest love in the world. Love may be a common word, but it dramatically impact in our lives. So in today's gospel text, Jesus tells his disciples clearly, if you allow me, if you allow me, you will keep my commandments. The new commandment is straightforward. He said to his disciples, listen, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have a love for one another. It's a clear conditional. It is not unconditional. This final statement of Jesus makes more sense when you think about the behavior of disciples in all four gospels. You know here and there, Matthew, Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all four gospels tells the disciples real nature because they came from a fisherman family. All the time they were struggling with the nature, the deep sea, and sometimes they did not catch anything. So in this situation, their culture was quite different than the, the cultural people, those who living in the, in the society. So therefore, they're not uncultured, but they carry their own culture. In that situation, Jesus clearly understand the disciples' nature and their behavior. So therefore, he called these disciples for his ministry. Now his last word, final word, is to encourage his disciples. So this final statement of Jesus makes more sense when you think about the behavior of the disciples in all for gospel, what I explained before. So when we carefully consider the gospel, it becomes evident that the disciples of Jesus did not always get along with each other. This sometimes happens in our own family. Children, sometimes if you have three children or two children, sometimes it doesn't get along with them each other. This is very common, common conditions in all families. In other words, they did not have a real love for each other. And they were fighting each other and quarreling each other like a children. So therefore now Jesus is stressing again and again saying, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. So Jesus was not addressing his disciples with humor, but he was very serious about the love that can be seen in their practice and actions. In other words, your practice and action should be a model for others. This spirit-filled love should stand courageously in good and bad situations, particularly in a self-interested world and challenging world. So we are called to witness Christ's love to others. In the world history, as well as in the church history, lots of things happened, written as well as written regarding a church, what happened in the, from the beginning to until now, what happened and what had happened, what is going on, to still it continues. All history is written in the church history book. In many churches throughout the world, many things happened in order to retain their traditions and customs and self-centered power. And churches were facing many issues in internal fighting. Thus, so many fractions, divisions, and breakaway church groups come into existence by ignoring the love of Jesus Christ. They did not think about love of Jesus Christ, but they thought, this is our tradition, this is our culture. Therefore, we, we need a more tradition than the 
spiritual or the tradition than the biblical scripture or maybe a scriptural uh, interpretations. So I found out one of the examples from uh, one of the pastor from United States, Stephen Cole's blog, uh, and when he says, and this quote, back in the 1970s, some church grow, some church grow uh, growth groups. Um, that is uh, especially church gurus, what we used to call him, church gurus or church leaders. Observed that Christians like to go to church with others who are just like they are. Whites likes to be with the whites, blacks like to be with the blacks. And rich college graduates like other rich college graduates. Rednecks don't like going to church with the long-haired liberals who favor gun control. And rednecks use long-haired liberals for target practice. So these church growth gurus gave us a homogeneous unit principle. That means the principle is if you want to your church to grow, you have got to target the niche that you are trying to reach the market, your church to those folks. Also, what I would say, the church should reflect the racial and socio-economic diversity when churches divide along racial lines. But our love for one another should noticeably cross divisions that we see in the world. And also Pastor, Pastor Cole gives an example. He gives his own example. When Marla, a young girl, was a new Christian, she attended a church that met in a park, like an open park. It consisted predominantly of hippies, most of, the, uh, most of whom were under 30. I remember very well it was the 1970s, in the early 70s, when I was in a school student, I saw many hippies from United States and Germany. They used to come with the bell-bottom pants and long hair and with the guitar and smoking a cigarettes, all these kind of a things I, I observed. So this is, he's, he brings this picture to that. What he says, these most hippies, most of whom were under 30, the way the church got its starts was another sad example of Christians violating Jesus' command to love one another. This is the pastor called statement. And what he said, a pastor, a youth pastor at a Baptist church started seeing a number of young hippies come to church. So he started bringing them to church. So, but the people in the church protested. They're very traditional. They're very custom oriented. So they protested. I know because this was a happening a long time in 1970, all over the world. Even after the pietism movement, even after the evangelical movement, still churches, they are holding very strongly their own traditions. Episcopal, their own tradition, Anglican own traditions, and Lutheran own tradition, Methodist own traditions, and Baptist also own traditions, Orthodox own traditions. So therefore, so they don't, they didn't want kids looking like that coming to the church with a long hair. Even in an Episcopal church, just to take example, when I, when I taught uh, lots of uh, young kids uh, for the lay Eucharistic minister, as well as uh, uh, the uh, lay ministry for acolytes and crucifer, I trained many, many young youngsters. But in the manual, it's clearly said, it's dress shoes and very nice polished and cut short hair and very well dressed. Nowadays, if I'm going to tell a young people, they will not listen. So we have a little bit to modify. So I'm not against that what it's written in the manual, but at the same time, we should be very flexible if you want to attract if you want to invite young people. So therefore, they didn't want what Pastor Cole says, they didn't want the kids to look like that coming to their church with the long hair. 
what would people think? For starters, they might have thought, those people must be Jesus' disciples. Is it right or no? That youth pastor went to several churches and tried to get them to accept his group, but was turned down at every church. He visited many churches to accept these young kids in different places. They did not allow them. They did not invite them. They turned down his request. It was very sad. He finally was forced to start his own church. So what I would say, now Jesus, so Jesus' love was costly, caring, and commanded, and should be visible. It's not, it's supposed to not be hidden. It's not only with the words. It should be moved, the whole, hovering the spirit uh, in the world, on the world, in the, in the world. So, according to Jesus, love was not just an option if you wanted to be, to be his disciples. It was a requirement. There is no option. It was a requirement. So, the apostle John says we are capable of loving others because Jesus modeled it for us by loving us. Love does not happen in emptiness. Love is something that is given from one person to another. It's like uh, passing the hats. So therefore, love produces a fruit that keeps on growing and spreading and continue to change our families, our lives, and our world. Love produces all kinds of things, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, and faithfulness, because it allows us to develop empathy. So finally, this pastor, he started his own church because now, Everyone turned down. Finally, he started his own church. That church grew like a mega church. So that, that's a way when we do our ministry without any prejudices. So then love produces all kinds of things. Joy, peace, patience, gentleness, and faithfulness. Because it allows us to develop empathy. It also produces self-control as we try to be less greedy and selfish. Love does not have boundaries or barriers. Love does not have limitations or conditions. And true unconditioned love does not have rules and regulations. Even though we all know about love, Jesus, Jesus called to his disciples then and to us, now is still a tough task. It is not easy. We can preach about love, but it is when we follow, it is really difficult. But we, with the determination, we can do it. So not because we don't know how to love, but because we usually saw that our love only to be people we care about. Imagine your boss or your supervisor, supervisor telling you to love your coworkers the same way you, you love your spouse or parent or children. That can be real tough. It won't be happen sometimes. Your family is family, worker is your friends is friends. But, and that is precisely what Jesus is asking us to do. So as we reflect on our spiritual journey this week, I urge you, I urge all of us to consider tangible ways in which we can respond to Jesus' call to love everybody, everyone deeply. The need to love and feel loved is especially great in these isolating and challenging times. In the fact, in the face of this challenging time, what we will do? How will we show our love 
to all people in our lives and not just one who are close to us? What kind of prejudices must get rid of So how we will show our love to all people in our lives and not just one who are close to us? What kind of a prejudices must we get rid of so we can love like Christ? And how will we continue to love everyone deeply beyond this week ascension and throughout the year? We, will, we all need to reflect on these questions this week and every week after that when we do we will commune with god to find our own unique ways to continue channeling channeling the love of christ into this world my dear brothers and sisters in christ today's gospel is it's like a jesus farewell speech to his disciples. It makes a moment when the disciples of Jesus realize that they would not be seeing their masters again. In this parting moment, Jesus encouraged his disciples to live in harmony and unity. Today's gospel gives us the awareness that love is a Christian's primary witness to the world that is a christian's primary witness to the world our spouses our children our relatives our neighbors our dear and near ones will know that we are christ followers if we have love for them and for everyone we meet christ tells us to love others just like he loved us we are called to love our brothers and sisters in the way that parents love their children. We are called to love without condition if we, we to care for and to pray for others. We are called to love others regardless of their attitudes towards us. We are called to love irrespective of what they may or may not deserve. So again, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are called to love irrespective of whatever they are related to us by blood or by ties of affection or common interest. And to do this, we can look to the Holy Spirit to garner Jesus' love in us. So therefore, Jesus in the last days after his resurrection, he gives the encouragement to the disciple. If you don't do it, then the mission will not, will move forward. That is your responsibility now. Now I gave a leadership and I preached and I taught. Now you take this gospel to the world beyond the boundary. Gentiles or heathens or pagans, doesn't matter, or Jews or Greek, doesn't matter. That you have to take this gospel with the love and affection to the whole world. So therefore, Jesus said in the last commandment, go into the world and preach the gospel. And baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That was the love. That is the last command. And love your neighbor, love one another. That is the great two commandments God has given. Love your God and love your neighbor. So, and to do this, we can look to the Holy Spirit to garner Jesus' love in us. Guidance of the Holy Spirit. It is a connection that always had existed and will continue to exist. But we must we must commune with God regularly for us to become aware of this presence in our lives. So again, my friends, let us all go forth in the peace and harmony to reflect upon the love that 
is deep within us with love that is deep within us that is jesus love that is the love of jesus so let us draw upon this love that is embedded with us so that we may spread it in the world may god bless you all amen let us pray loving god we have gathered here today to worship you and thank you for your love grant us your strength and guidance so that we might love as jesus loved us and so that we might live as you meant us to live in jesus name we pray amen <laughs> He is Lord, He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord, every knee shall bow, every tongue That Jesus Christ is Lord. Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of being one with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now demonstrate the hope that fills our hearts by turning to God in prayer, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Empower with your spirit, O Lord, all ministers of the gospel, that they may preach the word boldly and without apology. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Empower with your spirit, O Lord, all leaders of nations, that they may be unrelenting in their quest for peace. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Empower us with your spirit, O Lord, all the suffering peoples of this world, especially those who suffer due to pandemic, uh, the pandemic COVID-19 virus. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Empower with your spirit, O Lord, those among us who experience desolation, especially those for whom God seems to be remote. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Empower with your spirit, O Lord, all sick and dying, that they may find life. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Empower with your spirit, O Lord, the newly baptized, that they may never cease to praise you for the hope that fills their hearts. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our partner congregations. Today we pray especially for Adonai Roy Messianic Jewish Congregation in Tel Aviv and their pastor, Avi Mizraki. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our reconciliation partners, Chander and Kanta Khanna and Iftikhar Basmi in Kashmir and Bassam Ishak in Syria. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for the Ministry of the Month, Holy Family Church in Rainy, Israel, and for their priest, Father Hannah Daly. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Here we can offer our own intercessions. Gracious God, it is in the power of the and in the life I give you the glory that we call upon you in prayer. Give the Lord hope in your presence and your promise. Give the Lord your hand and love now and forever. Amen. Now let us confess our sins and give you God our neighbor. Most of us, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have done, we have not done it with the whole heart. We have not done it with the whole We are truly sorry that we have not repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may lie in you and walk in your way to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you for you all must be Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you all witness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also All right, now we have today uh, the prayer of the birthday, they celebrate their birthday May 17th, Jane Galbraith, and also Greg Koss. And also we have an anniversary, John and Jenny Persons. And how many years, uh, Jenny? 52 years? Very good. Okay, so then. Um, and also Dougal and Cat.
uh, Greg Koss and Jane. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of another year of uh, of J, uh, Greg as well as Jane. On this day, we ask for your special blessing upon and a day filled with joy and hope. We pray that this coming year might be one that will bring personal success and fulfillment and accomplishment for them. Father, we know that you delight in blessing your servants, and so we ask you to bless them. May we all be grateful for your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray for anniversary. Gracious God, we thank you for giving John and Jenny Parson and Dougal and Catherine House another year together. Thank you for their love which grows more precious and for the bonds which grow stronger each day. Thank you for the happiness they have known together, for the sor sorrows they have faced together, for all the experiences which they have shared and from which they have grown day by day. As they celebrate their wedding anniversary, bless them as they move forward from this day and grant them the best year to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I think Greg is not there. Beth is here. And uh, happy birthday, Greg, as well as Jane. And also happy anniversary, John and Jenny and Dougal and Catherine. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Um, Thank you, Father. Okay. Um, could you put yourself? There you go. Thanks. You got it? I see you. How's the sound? Okay? Yeah, you're good. Down from his glory, ever living story. Our God and Savior came, and Jesus was his name. Born in a manger, to his own a stranger, a man of sorrows, grief, and agony. Oh, how I love Him, how I adore Him, my breath, my sunshine, my all and all, the great Creator became my Savior, and all God's fullness dwelleth in Him. Ooh, what condescension, bringing us redemption, that in the dead of night, not one faint hope in sight, God gracious tender laid aside his splendor stooping to woo to win to save my soul oh how I love him how I adore him my breath my sunshine, my all in all, the great creator became my savior, and all God's fullness dwelleth in him. Without reluctance, 
flesh and blood his substance. He took the form of man, revealed the hidden plan. Oh, glorious mystery, sacrifice of Calvary. And now I know thou art the great I am. Oh, how I love him, how I adore him, my breath, my sunshine, my all in all, the great creator. Came my Savior, and all God's fullness dwelleth in Him, the great Creator. Became my Savior, and all God's And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For well, thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of promise and God of hope, who through your great mercy have granted us new birth through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lord, we praise your wonderful name, God of glory, God of might, who through your great power have granted us new strength to Endure all things through faith in Christ our risen Lord. We praise your wonderful name. We pray for all who bring your word of life as a light to those in darkness, for those who bring your word of peace, to those enslaved by fear, for those who bring your word of love, to those in need of comfort. Lord of love, Lord of peace, Lord of resurrection, be known through our lives and through your power. Lord is risen, he is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. Let, other, let us receive the benediction by faith. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with this favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you may faithfully live in this life and in the age to come have life everlasting. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us sing Alleluia, Alleluia Bright burning sun with golden gleams Pale silver moon that gently gleams Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him Praise Him, oh praise Him, hallelujah.
Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord, singing Alleluia throughout your life. Do not be afraid, for the risen Christ is walking with you. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Hallelujah.
Thank you for worshiping with us today. May God bless you and your family.